Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be hooking up the emergency brakes for my bow-tailed speedster here. Uh, this was a really fun little project and what I think was a pretty cool design. Uh, the way it works here is you have one cable coming up from each of the rear wheels. Those are connected to this little chain that wraps around an idler sprocket and that is connected to um, this lever here that you pull whenever you want to engage the brakes. Um, what that does is it ensures that each cable has the same exact tension because they're connected to each other around a pulley, which means they're basically the same cable. Um, so that gives you nice even braking to each rear wheel. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. So the emergency brake cables that I'm using come from just a universal emergency brake cable kit that I bought online. And anyone who's worked with universal parts like that in the past knows that the only thing that makes them universal is that they universally don't fit. Um, and that was certainly true with these cables that I got. Um, they have a threaded aluminum piece that's, that's crimped onto the end of the cable sheath. And that's designed to either thread into or be bolted onto some sort of tab on the brake side of things, either for drum brakes or for disc brakes. But they certainly don't fit the drum brakes that I have. There's no way for that to thread onto. So this piece that I'm making right here is going to allow me to adapt those cables onto um, this, the brake setup that I have here. Here I'm removing that piece um, where the brake cable is designed to kind of insert into, kind of um, guides it into the inside of the brake there. And what I'm just going to do is cut off the top of that and that will allow me to then weld on that piece that I just made. So you can see that it just kind of fits right on there. And for this weld, you can see I'm not really using any filler wire. I'm just doing a fusion weld around there. That seemed to work just fine. There was enough material there for it to, to just fuse itself together and it's not really going to experience a whole lot of stress either. So after I made that I can just um, insert it back in and then thread the cable right into place as if that's how it was always supposed to be. <laughs> Next up then is this little sprocket here that's going to be attached to the bottom of the emergency brake cable lever. It'll have that little chain that goes around it where the cables are attached to. And all I'm doing here is just boring out the center of it and this will give me enough clearance inside to insert a, a custom bronze bushing. And then after I do that I'm going to part it off from the rest of that hub there because I just want this to be a flat plate sprocket, um, not with all that extra material on it. And then here that it like jams up in the, the lathe and breaks my parting off tool. but I can just pretend that never happened and then um, cut it off after resharpening that, that bit there. And then once I made up that little bronze bushing out of some proper bearing bronze, I can press it into uh, the sprocket that I've modified. And then on the other side, since I don't want that sprocket to move back and forth on the thinner part of the bushing, I made a little bronze ring that can just slide around it and basically just act as a spacer. And you can see right there it actually cracks when I hammer it on, but I just made up another one and pressed it on. So you can just pretend that never happened.
Okay, so I've got one tab welded on here, and then this little sprocket will go on just like that, and there'll be another tab that comes down on the front of it, and that'll work just fine. The problem is, though, I don't really like the look of it. I don't like how this, the, you know, this arm here has like, it's got a nice cast look to it. It's got some shape on it, you know, both ways. It's not just flat plate. And then you get down here and it's just like a flat tab that comes straight down and doesn't really match. Um, those of you who will remember me making this piece know that I made it out of this front bicycle fork from an old Schwinn bicycle. And that's why it has that nice, almost like forged steel look to it, because that's what it is. Um, so what I think I'm gonna do is cut this tab back off and then try to make new pieces out of the end of the remaining fork here. And I can shape it to maybe taper it this way a little bit more too. Um, but this will have like a nice, similar cast steel look to it that I think will flow a lot better um, with the overall design of everything. So then after I made the decision to redo that tab on the bottom there, um, I drew out the pattern that I liked on that bicycle fork and took it back over to the bandsaw to cut out the general shape. And this one was a little bit more involved than the first iteration because after cutting it out and drilling that hole, I also had to mill one side of it flat. Um, this was so that I could have a nice flat surface for that bronze bearing to ride against and also just to thin it out a little bit because um, this one was quite a bit thicker at the middle part than that um, the first flat plate was. And I wanted to keep it as uh, nice and compact and low profile as possible. So then after I cleaned it up a little bit with the uh, wire wheel on the angle grinder, I took it back to the mill and put this slight little counter bore on the opposite side that I had already milled flat. And the reason for doing this will become apparent uh, fairly soon. All right, so I got the new arm welded on there now. And yeah, I think that was definitely the right move. I don't know how easy it is to see on camera, but that definitely looks a lot better than just that flat plate there. It kind of flows much better with the, the rest of the arm there. So that piece is completely welded on. I also made up the second arm here already. So this will fit right on the outside and then that should be good to go. So once I got all three pieces then welded together, it was time to break out the hand files and really file the welds down to make this all look like one continuous cast piece of steel. When I welded it, I tried to make sure um, to get it as smooth as possible to begin with, um, to have a nice transitions between the pieces that I was welding together. But now that I can bring out the files, I can smooth down all the welds so you really can't even tell that it was ever welded and it looks like it was always one solid piece. And this bolt here is going to become the pin that holds the sprocket onto the arm there. 
So you can see all I really did here is, you know, I filed it down a little bit, turned the head down to a, to a circle, and then I'm also thinning down the head to make it um, nice and sleek and low profile. So after finishing the pin and cleaning it up in the lathe a little bit, I can assemble everything. And it's hard to see from this angle, but the counterbore that I put in that first tab allows for the head of that um, pin to fit right onto nice and flush, since that's going to be on the side of the body panel of the Roadster. It was very close and I didn't really have room to have the head protruding out above that tab there. So that ke keeps it nice and low profile and gives me clearance there for the side of the car. So once I had that all installed, it was time to work on a piece that will connect the chain to the actual cable. This started out as a length of 3 8 inch square key stock, and I drilled the hole in there that is going to eventually attach to the chain, and here I'm thinning out the end of it also so that it can fit into the chain links. And then once I finished of that, I can cut it off of the rest of the key stock and then take it over to the lathe. And if you're thinking, wait a minute, you can't turn a square piece of metal in a three jaw chuck. Well, you certainly can, but it just won't be centered. And I'm actually doing that on purpose to take advantage of that for a very particular reason that um, you'll see pretty soon here. And one of the last things to do now is to drill and tap the holes for the set screws that will hold the cable inside this block here. And this is why I had it in the three jaw chuck turning off center, because I can have more material on the side of the set screws, so the screws have more threads to grab onto, and less material on top where I don't really need it.
So then once that piece was finished, I could move on to tacking on these couple little brackets here. These are the pieces that will give me a nice firm mounting point for the other side of the cable sheath so that it can then run the bare cable up to the actual emergency brake lever. Once I got those in place then, I could measure out how long I want the actual sheath of the cable to be. And then just using a simple cutoff disc with an angle grinder, I could cut that off to length. Before I did this, I had to make sure to pull the cable back past the point where I was cutting, because if I did to that, then I'd be cutting into the actual cable as well, and then ruin the whole thing. So, you know, you can see here, I made sure to pull it back and then now push it back through and then get upset because it bumped the camera, but that worked out pretty nicely. And then you can see here, it just mounts straight to the frame with some simple hardware that came with the kit. So once one of the cables was inserted like that, it was pretty much just a rinse and repeat with the second one. And now you can see I'm cutting the actual cable itself after taking great care to make sure that I was cutting it at the exact right spot and not too short. And then so after I did that, I put a little tack weld on the end of it there that fuses the wires together and make sure that the cable won't fray at all at the end. And then once I do that for both of them, I can pretty much just insert them into those little blocks connected to the chain and that's it. All right, well there is the finished emergency brake setup now. And honestly, it really looks a lot like how I had it envisioned from the start. Um, I really love the look of the, you know, the external mechanic, mechanical components, how you can see the chain going around the, the little sprocket there and the cables that go back to the frame. Uh, I think it turned out really nicely. And it, you know, you can pull on it and it certainly really, you know, locks up the brake shoes there are definitely locking up inside the the drums, those all still have to be adjusted though, so I wouldn't trust them to stop the car just yet. Um, but everything is moving the way that it should, which is, which is really nice. So let me know in the comments what you thought of the design, how would you do it differently, or what were your favorite parts about it. And that's all I have for you today, so I'll see you next time.